Salon here from winstrength.com bringing you the final review and overview of the Dark Horse training program by Brian Osru. Like usual, I'll leave links below for Brian Osru's original video where he actually explains the program uh, and goes over what to do if you want to do the program yourself, as well as the Lift Vault website where they've taken that information and placed that into a free Google spreadsheet so you can do uh, the program yourself without having to worry about entering all that into spreadsheet yourself. Uh, so here we go, uh, wrapping up with the final video that I'll do regarding the Dark Horse Training Program with Brian Olser. We've actually finished up testing, we finished up the final week. So we've given myself about two weeks to do go through the final round of testing where we just do obviously the one rep maxes for the squat bench deadlift. Um, overhead press, I've actually included the safety bar squat as well as uh, the clean in press just to throw those movements in there because I thought uh, the Dark Horse program kind of included those and I just wanted to also get a benchmark for myself for moving into the future um, Where those are going to be and at least we have a record of where they're at right now uh, so overall, I think the Program was really good. Um, I would highly recommend it if you're looking to change up the current program you're in if you haven't done anything quite like uh, conjugate style daily undulating periodization uh, West Side style. If you haven't played around with any of that, even the giant set, something quite unique to the program, I highly recommend doing it. Um, but I'll get further into that into the video. So for now, what I'll do is I'll play some uh, video footage of my one rep max testing, so you can kind of see where it is. Um, yeah. So here we're opening up with the squats. Uh, this is probably on the third day of testing, actually. So we have 465. Uh, it's a five pound increase. Quite a slow rep there, but we hit depth. Um, I think it went well, you feel some knee caving in. Here's the same squat uh, just from the back view just to make sure that I did hit depth, which I think it's pretty much we hit depth. Yeah, like barely, maybe an inch or two lower. Um, but it's good to see the knees didn't really slide back too much. So that was a great effort there. Here we have uh, the main bench press. Uh, we only hit 315, that was the same weight that I've hit before, it didn't feel like it was going, but you can see here it stalls quite a lot. I didn't think I was going to be able to push out any more weight after that rep. Uh, and then after that, we move on to the deadlift. Uh, in real time, we actually did the bench press after the deadlift. Here is 495, again, matching my previous PR. I did load four, I did load 505 and 515 on the bar. To see if I could hit it, it was unsuccessful. Uh, here's a new press PR, 215 pounds. Very slow, uh, but we did lock that out. Uh, I do almost black out here for a moment. You can see, oh, there we go. Um, but I do tell myself here yeah. that I hit the weight. Uh, here we have the new PRs here. So here's a safety squat barber for 40. You can see the weight really driving you forward and you have to really fight through that unusual weight distribution. And then wrapping up with the clean and press PR, 215 pounds. Very ugly power clean there. Uh, tried to hit it for a second rep, but it was unsuccessful. So you can see that the results kind of weren't that great uh, in regards to the one rep max training. But again, because it is not a program that is specifically designed to boost up your one rep max strength, nor is it a truly powerlifting style program. I don't think you can fault it on that because that's not exactly what it was designed to do. That's like me saying that a Ferrari is really bad at towing a trailer. It's not the design. It's not what it was built for. Uh, the Dark Horse Training Program was generally built to, was designed from what I can understand to be a very uh, good program at developing strength and conditioning and kind of giving you what Osru calls the superhero level of strength where you're kind of trying to create a base a good base level of strength that's uh, kind of a jack of all trades but master of none uh, it's kind of derived from his own personal experiences which I highly recommend watching those videos too uh, but mainly he needs to he aims to improve conditioning uh, and by really condensing in the amount of work you do, you don't have to do kind of extra conditioning because the way the program is built, you're doing conditioning by doing the program because of those giant set structures. We're doing 
the, the antagonist muscle, the main muscle, then an ab, and then a conditioning movement, and then only resting for 90 seconds to two minutes. So with that framework in mind, the program is inbuilt conditioning because you're kind of already doing it. And with that being said, because we are improving and driving up those conditioning uh, factors in the body, we're going to have some not optimal performances in our one rep max strength because they're kind of, I mean, we're all kind of, all the goals are working towards being stronger and being better, but some of them kind of divert on different paths. And when you hyper focus on developing one rep max strength, you're not going to be able to focus on developing your conditioning as much as if you kind of shared the lane with both of them. So the program does have various goals uh, that kind of dilute the progression in any one single goal. Uh, that's why you'll notice that my bench press and deadlift kind of stalled, which was interesting because uh, throughout the whole program, those two were the two lifts that I thought were going to be the shining stars. They were going to just go up by huge amounts because during the program, I felt strongest in those two lifts. Um, the overhead press and the squat weren't really... Uh, I didn't think they were tracking that well based on my weight progression, the way they felt, the way the movements felt in, con in contrast to the deadlift on the overhead press where they felt really strong, really solid, the numbers were driving up. Um, and I don't know what the cause of that was. Uh, maybe I didn't give that rest period enough. Maybe I didn't sleep well enough on the day of testing. Uh, there's a lot of factors that go into it, but at the very least, the numbers didn't regress. So none of the lifts none of the weights regressed and if anything the squat and the press obviously increased by five pounds so that was a good thing so I, I think with that in mind with that background of the program in mind I don't think it's a failure of the program that it didn't increase my one rep max strength I think it's a surprise of the program that it did uh, increase some of the lifts and didn't let me regress in any of the lifts really so what I'll do is I'll actually leave a link below for the for my blog where I actually go into some more details as to why I chose a program, uh, a little bit of background. Um, I've been training powerlifting style for quite a number of months, probably close to a year and a half uh, powerlifting specific programming and I've just wanted a break from that so I found Aldra's videos really helpful and I decided to try one of his free training videos in order to drive a little bit more adaptations in conditioning and get more of a base level of strength so that I could do higher rep work and kind of shift towards more of a power building style strongman uh, programming type and I thought this program was a good bridge between the two of those and I'm really interested in in more strongman style training now so again a really good bridge to develop a bit more of a strength for endurance rather than strength for strength as it sounds weird to say but that's kind of the background as to why I decided to do this program so that's why I'm kind of excited that my, none of my one rep maxes decreased had a couple of increases but the other aspect that I thought was huge with this program is my uh, improvements in overall like conditioning and health and well-being I guess is the lack of a better term to say it uh, because of the high conditioning demands and the intensity of the workout I, I've noticed that that has spilled over into everyday life for me so um, I've noticed like just working I, I work like a mildly laborious job so that has helped me not feel as tired during the day uh, being on my feet for like six hours a day doesn't feel as uh, tiring as it used to and just walking around doing just everyday activities day-to-day -day life um, walking upstairs walking up hills none of that seems as uh, tiring if tiring at all compared to what it was when I was specifically looking at powerlifting and um, when when time was an issue I dropped out any conditioning so I really had zero conditioning just training purely for one rep max strength um, for a good year I found some good results building up that one rep max strength, but at the cost of some conditioning. And since I wasn't really competing in powerlifting, um, I wanted to have a shift, move away from that style so that I could uh, have a little bit more aerobic capacity during during other times when I'm not trying to squat as for once effectively. And I think that's where the beauty of the program lies. It's, it's I, I get why he calls it the Dark Horse Program because you kind of see these surprising results out of the program. Oh yeah, driving up huge conditioning levels. We're really condensing that workout. And just between that, I didn't do any extra conditioning. I didn't do any anything on top of the program. If anything, I did less than what the program was asking for. So to see these awesome results in 
and just day to day conditioning levels, being able to do more and be more active as a general blanket, um, I think has, has had the most carry through to like, uh, quality of life, I guess it, it would be the term that I'm kind of looking for here where it's, we only spend an hour to two hours in the gym, but those other 22 hours, 23 hours of the day, if they're better just because of what you do for this one hour, then that's great. Uh, even just like moving stuff around the house, because obviously a lot of powerlifting is static strength. We're just lifting something up and not moving our feet. We kind of introduced a little bit of uh, dynamic strength here with moving around heavy weights and farmer walks. And that has way more like real world carryover to just everyday tasks, moving furniture, uh, moving stuff at work. And I thought that was a really cool hidden feature of the program. It's not really something I was looking to get out of the program. I was obviously working out to get better at working out, but we see these, these subtle uh, transitions and transfer effects into everyday life, which is a really cool effect out of the program. That's why I think it's one of the better programs out there if you're not looking at competing in powerlifting, you're kind of looking to increase your strength levels overall. Uh, we do see increases in, we do play around with one, three, and five rep maxes for our max effort work. And then for the volume work, we are increasing those rep ranges out. So we are playing with a lot more reps and single reps and like anything under 10. So we're venturing into like 12, 15 reps. Uh, so we're really spanning the gamut of rep ranges, which allows us to express strength at different weights for different amounts of time, which I thought was a great uh, outcome of the program. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, uh, as usual, nutrition was not one of my uh, focuses during the program, so my body weight kind of hovered around 202 to 210 throughout the program. There was just kind of a, a slow increase in weight, like ever so subtly, uh, but we did see fluctuations there. Again, I wasn't paying attention to anything really. I was just kind of eating when I was hungry. I'm not really focused on my nutritional habits and nutritional structure as it were. Uh, so that might have been, uh, it might explain why some of the outcomes weren't as optimal because I wasn't really optimizing my diet and nutritional intakes. I was trying to focus on mainly just uh, hit my protein requirements for the day. And that's really all I kind of focus on. Uh, however, whatever else fits within that is just kind of where the chips may fall because chips are great. But with that in mind, I think if you were looking to lose some weight, the Dark Horse program is probably one of the better programs out there for doing that. Just because of that high intensity, uh, giant set style structure, uh, you'll be able to fuel the performance. Again, when you look at reducing calories, you're probably going to see a reduction in performance. So that's where this program might be harder to complete if you are in a caloric restriction just because that high performance level and the high intensity nature of the workout is really going to tax you mentally and physically uh, and if you can mentally come over that hurdle of no food and working out really hard then this will be a great training program in order for you to lose weight on just because it does drive up a lot of those adaptations and really does tax that cardiovascular system. Uh, I won't really go over the structure of the program mainly because Olsra goes over it in his video and then this video will turn into a longer video than his video so if you want to read more about the program I've, I've listed the main structural points in my blog on, at winstrength.com uh, as well as you can watch Olsra's video where he actually explains it too so I think if you watch those uh, watch that video, read the blog, you get a really good understanding of how the program is structured and the basic underlying tenets of why uh, Ulzer does what he does in the structure. So the first big pro of the program is the improved uh, conditioning. I've gone over this uh, before and I just want to reiterate it that this is a huge pro and a huge positive result from the program is this increased conditioning f level that I didn't expect to get out of it. Um, I was mainly hoping to improve it slightly just because of the way the giant set structured, knowing that going into the program, but I didn't expect it to be this huge. The problem um, that I have is that there's no concrete way to really measure this. Um, it's really more of an overall feeling of well-being that I have um, and just a general lack of tiredness during the last parts, last half of the training program. So there's no real solid metric I can provide you to prove that my fitness is, well, that my cardiovascular conditioning is better other than it just feels easier to do the work. Even though most things are staying the same, we were dropping some of the work 
Uh, we were dropping some of the sets out, and that was mainly for time. Um, every now and then, fatigue kicked in, accumulating fatigue, but that was generally right before a rest week. So I think overall, if I looked at it like subjectively, um, there's a general feeling of positive well-being, but no real way for me to measure that. Um, unless I guess I could start timing farmer carries and farmer walks, doing that type of stuff. But I don't. I didn't have those measurements at the start of the program, so I can't really give you a, a, a definite contrast between before and after. And as I mentioned earlier, just that general overall well-being and day-to-day life, everyday activities seem easier, <laughs> less out of breath, climbing up several flights of stairs. So that's always a good thing. I think the other big pro of the program is if you're the type of personality that needs exercise variability, this program has a lot of exercise variability. Um, not only do we change programs, tra- not only do we change exercises every three weeks because of the, sh- the three by three training structure, each day uh, we play around with different sets and reps. So we're getting a daily variability of sets and reps. Um, we're getting three, every three weeks we're changing exercises. And then within each day we're doing different types of weight training so we're doing max effort heavy weights and we're doing volume so we're doing lots of reps and then we're wrapping up with dynamic effort where we're doing explosive uh, speed work so each day we see three different aspects of training um, that we can use and then each day that differs so there's a lot of variability a lot of um, mental excitement because you're able to do different things you're not doing five by five every day day in day out week after week with the same exercises uh, we, we're switching it up, we're changing it up, and then that giant set structure kind of adds to that intensity level and kind of brings up the like mental arousal during the workout because we are fatigued, we are tired, we are getting mentally taxed and physically taxed as well. So I think that was a great way to break up uh, some strict powerlifting style templates where it's very much regimented and a lot more linear in nature, uh, just with the way that powerlifting has to be structured for the most part. It's very repetitive in nature, and we're always trying to train one specific outcome which is why we need that structured tailored approach here we're kind of building building a more general level of strength jack of all trades uh, type physicality so we can play around with different exercises different reps different sets different timings things like that so that's really cool we can venture out of the regular we can divert away from more specific accessory lifts uh, to more varied accessory lifts. So instead of instead of having to do, say, tempo squats, we can throw in uh, more lunges and more uh, front squats, uh, dynamic squat type things, just because we're not trying to drill down on the competition style back squat. It gives us this option to open up to the variabilities because we're not training for one specific goal. So move on to the pro of the way that the program sets up auto regulation. Uh, it's able to set up auto regulation without having to rely on RPE. If you're not a fan of that style of training, um, I'm still a fan of the RPE style training. Personally, um, I tried to include it with this just as a mental note to kind of regulate how everything was going. I never really wanted to go towards max out um, during the workouts, even if it was a five reps, I would probably be doing an RPE nine, nine and a half, unless I failed, in which case it was obviously a 10. Um, with that in mind, the the training program doesn't require RPE. Um, I still think you should be mentally at least logging, taking account of what the RPE was for each movement and what it was for the day, just so you can start using that as a data point for your own uh, self-reflection and self-assessment of how a program is going and how your body is re- is uh, relating to that program. But that being said, the program does rely on some choice uh, in order to mitigate, uh, to auto-regulate that stress. So we have that one, the choice of the one, three, or five for the max effort work. So if you're feeling great that day, try and go for a new one rep max. If you're not feeling if you're not feeling great, you just kind of want to get in and get out of the gym. The five rep max is there so you can uh, lower that weight level used and kind of just get in some heavy five rep work. And then what that does is it shifts the structure of the volume. So then we change the um, amount of reps and sets we do, or sorry, the amount of reps we do for the volume work. And then because the volume is generally always an 80% range of that heavy thing, heavy max work for the day we're gonna be 80% of whatever it is that we hit for the day. So it's able to auto-regulate kind of that way. We're always doing percentages based of what our performance is for the day, not performance, uh, what it was like four weeks ago when we tested our one rep maxes. 
And that brings us to another, the next pro, which was the way that the program handles stress mitigation. And that kind of covers it with the ability for us to tailor in that one, three, five rep choice for the max effort work. Uh, that also dictates how many sets you do. So the, the one rep maxes, you're going to do six sets. Um, I think for the three, you do five, and then for the five reps, you do four sets. So we're kind of playing around with sets and reps in order to mitigate that stress and dial back whenever we have to and ratchet down if need be. And again, that follows through to that volume work so that uh, we're not driving ourselves in if we don't feel like we need to drive ourselves in. Uh, the LIFO spreadsheet actually automatically changes the formulas if you do want to do the one, three, or five, so you can find yourself doing that if you're not feeling great for the day it's listed one just change that to five and it shifts down the volume work part of the spreadsheet so that's a great thing to think about if you're going to do the spreadsheet it does have that option there which is a great formula to include uh, and the other way that the program has sought to mitigate that stress is uh Olger's choice of when to perform the competition style movements um, so personally i've I get some issues in my shoulder when I do heavy low bar back squats and couple that with wide grip bench pressing. The typical competition style powerlifting variants of those movements. Um, but with the program, we're actually dialing back the weights being used. So the squat, the bench, the deadlift, and the overhead press in their typical competition style variants, the, the standard way you do all of them. Uh, we shift those to the dynamic effort work for the day. So we're never really touching heavy, heavy weights with those movements. Um, we're kind of doing 50 to 60% of our one rep maxes at really high speeds. And what that does is it removes that stress from the joint that I find myself experiencing when I'm doing, say, heavy singles for the low bar back squat repeatedly week after week. My shoulders just start to get a little bit aggravated. Might be a little bit of nocebo coming in, but that's just what happens when I train that way. So I tr tend to not enjoy those trainings as much as I did before when the shoulders weren't an issue. Um, and the beauty of doing heavy work with movements that are changing every three weeks uh, we kind of are avoiding and mitigating repetitive use pains and little injuries and little uh, sensations that come up that we don't really like. Because uh, if, say, this week we do three weeks with uh, heavy front squats, if there's anything that kind of pops up with the heavy front squats, by the third week you've stopped it and it's not really going to continue through. And then the next week we do heavy box squats. And then from there we do, say, heavy... Uh, heavy squats with the SS yoke bar. So by varying up those heavy movements, we're able to shift where the body is getting stressed. So that helps build up that overall general level of strength because we're strengthening different angles and different movement patterns that the body's experiencing over those varied styles of squats, as well as mitigating um, having the bar in the same position every week, week after week with a heavy weight. So yes, that makes it harder to track progress and I'll talk about that later on with the cons uh, but what it does is it really helps to keep the joints and the muscles fresh for the rest of the work um, and with the dynamic work with that speed work having that light of a weight doesn't really affect I found personally it doesn't really affect the pain that I feel in the shoulders uh, I'm just going to talk about shoulders here because that's what I've personally experienced so that it might be different for you with like a hip or a knee thing uh, the situation might be different but for my personal experience having the the typical competition style movements that aggravated my shoulder during heavy movements or even just lots and lots of heavy, mildly heavy weights for lots of reps uh, by switching them over to dynamic effort work where yes, we're doing them every week, uh, but we're not doing them as heavy and that even though the we're trying to apply 400 pounds of force to a 200 pound barbell, it's still a 200 pound barbell, so it doesn't have that same weight resting down on my shoulders, which I thought was a really cool thing. I never experienced really any shoulder pain, any bicep pain that I would experience from heavy squats and wide bench pressing. So that was a great thing to think about. And when you do do the program, I think it's a, a great thing to look at. If those four movements do have any issues with you, look at playing around with them in the accessory lifts. Uh, that way you can choose movement, movement options that don't aggravate injuries. You'll be able to plug in the exercises that agree with your body or even I mean obviously you want to use those accessory movements to bring up weaknesses in the body uh, but again you can use it to address injuries and pain sensations that you do feel and wrapping up with probably one of the more esoteric <laughs> pros of the program is that driving up of mental toughness something that uh, is 
is part and parcel and wound up in Osra's whole training philosophy is that building up of mental toughness, his whole never state mindset is there. And this program really pushes you. If you've never done any of his programs, it's a, it's like a whole nother world of, of mental pain that you will feel uh, that is driven by physical pain, obviously, and physical fatigue. So throughout the program, you, you, it's a very difficult program to get through. I found that personally. But I think at the end of it, it really drove up those that ability to endure uh, tough times voluntarily. So at any point in time, you can just walk out of the gym and stop working out, change the program, whatever you want to do. But the fact that you're voluntarily choosing to continue with the program and continue with the day, day after day, week after week for the full nine weeks, I think is a great thing to build because it shows, it proves to yourself in your own subconscious mind that you're able to do things that aren't comfortable repeatedly for the betterment of your body as a whole. So I think that is one of the cooler outcomes of the program as well. Something not as, uh, talked about I guess when we're talking about performance in the gym things like that I think building up that mental toughness building up that mental strength is going to be huge not just for the gym but for like other aspects of life just everywhere you go if you can drive up that mental toughness it's going to help you so everywhere in life as they say the hard thing about hard things is they're hard so you got to do them and that kind of wraps up the pros so we're going to move on to act cons for the dark horse program uh first off is <laughs> the intensity now i know i just talked about how good it is that the program is super intense it drives that mental toughness it drives that conditioning feature but it is a double-edged sword in the fact that it is very 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 fatiguing very very brutal and i found myself at times unable to complete the workouts in the allocated time of 90 minutes um, again that was my own fault that was part of my own uh, lack of mental toughness, mental fortitude in order to stick to that 90 second to two minute rest periods. It would probably blow out to three, four minutes. But when you repeat that extra minute, uh, it, it does draw out that program. So because we're doing multiple sets, so even if we have, if you look at it, there's probably like 12, 15 working sets. If you had an extra minute, and at the very least at a minute to every in between every set that's an extra 15 minutes that we've added to the length of the whole program so minutes little minutes here and there just keep adding up and and let's and i'll be honest with you the rest periods probably drew out to maybe from what should be two minutes maybe even four or five minutes towards the end of those heavy workout sessions there so we were pushing we were pushing the length of the programs out for sorry we were pushing out the length of the workout days just because i was being a bit more relaxed with those rest periods Um, and again that's just down to the intensity of the workout something I couldn't keep up with maybe if uh, maybe if there was coaching or external motivation there that'll probably mitigate that but at the same time this is an individual this is an individual endeavor here so something to work on in the future is to look at that mental fortitude in order to maintain that discipline to keep the keep the rest periods really low but again that's something to keep in mind when you do do the program is that huge intensity level. This is one of the most intense programs I think uh, available out there. The next con of the program would be the complexity of the program. Um, As you probably get, there's a lot of moving parts and a lot of things that are changing and you have choice and this choice affects how you do the volume work for the rest of the day. Um, So you do need a little planning beforehand. Think about what you're gonna do for the day, which you should be doing that anyway, but if you don't, keep that in mind. Uh, but with the program, there are a lot of moving parts and a lot of variabilities and changes that happen, a lot of different set rep structures across the days. Uh, even within the day, you have to choose different reps and that dictates different sets and reps for the subsequent things that you hit. Um, so I found myself every now and then uh, missing or misreading parts of the program and just doing something odd for that day that didn't quite make sense. Um, and that's very different to like a typical powerlifting style program where you do a heavy single and then you do some back off sets for volume. That, that simple, that very simple structure of like one heavy set and then a bunch of volume, one heavy set, bunch of volume, and then your accessory works for a certain amount of sets and reps. That's a pretty easy structure to follow. Whereas this one has a lot of moving parts. We're doing heavy work that's based on uh, percentages just because it has to be heavy. So we can't do heavy max work with 40%, obviously, we're looking at 
up and above like the 90% range. Then we do volume work. We're looking at 70 to 90% of that one rep max. And then dynamic speed work, which is 40 to 60%. So we're playing in all the different percentages of our one rep max. And they all kind of have to play together and work together. And you need to remember this when you do do the program is that there are different things that are happening. We're doing four movements in a, in a row and then a break and then f repeating that. Um, you can choose to plug in and sub out different movements depending on your weaknesses and your preferences. So there's a lot of uh, complexity in the program and I think if you understand the why, the underlying why of why the program is made and why we're doing certain things, it makes it a little bit easier to understand how to select weights and how to select movements. Uh, but again, that complexity is there in built into the program which is great again for that variability and training that jack of all trades superhero based level of strength but if you don't really understand the why behind it you might find yourself choosing different exercises that shouldn't be there or like choosing the different sets or misreading like I just misread some of the uh, the notes for the program and it was doing odd sets and reps after doing a certain amount of sets and reps. So you just need to be aware of the specificity of the program so you don't reduce its effectiveness on the outcomes. And that brings me to the next con where I don't think it's a great program for beginners. Um, I think, and, and I guess a beginner, I'm phrasing that as like someone that has never trained or has like under a month's worth of actual uh, targeted training. So if you're just, if you've been going to the gym but you're not doing a structured training program, um, probably not again probably not for you I think if you're more of an intermediate to advanced lifter um, I think at the very least you should have a baseline understanding of the, the concepts that are being played with here so you should understand what conjugate style training is what dynamic effort training is um, why you do certain reps for certain movements and certain days why the sets play in so you should have like a base level understanding of why the program is structured why it is just so you can overcome that complexity of the program and make the right choices about what to do at certain times in the program um, and again this isn't about uh, strength levels I don't think you need to hit certain like X level of strength before you do the program I think you need to hit X level of understanding before you do the program um, but again that also pairs with the fact that you should have some sort of base level of physicality um, if you've gone from watching TV for 10 hours a day, I don't think this is the first program you should jump into just because I think the intensity of the workout is probably going to kill you. Maybe, hopefully not literally, but definitely physically. And it, it might, because of that intensity of the nature, because of the intensity of the workout, it might cause you to quit working it all together because you're so hurt and fatigued and sore from the day before. This is one of those programs where I think it does help to have that some baseline level of general strength even though we are building general strength and it does it can tailor itself to you i think if you're not in a in a live coaching or group coaching scenario where there is someone that knows more than you to help you with these movements and the, with the workout it's probably not a good program to do if you're a beginner by yourself uh, and it also throws in to the fact that there is um the technical execution of the movement so f first off is we're doing some like dynamic work here so like clean and presses clean and jerks push presses uh things of that nature even the dynamic banded squats and things like that if you don't have a good technique pattern down and you're trying to do these movements at speed it's i don't think that's a great combination if i can barely overhead press with good technique i don't think i need to be split jerking a weight over my head um so there's that aspect of the technical knowledge of the lift so you should be technically proficient in the base movements because we're going to be inserting a dynamic versions of those movements as well as other complex movements of those lifts so if i'm again if i'm uncontrolled with a regular squat and you want me to do a tempo squat might be good or it might be bad depending on the individual and the second part of that is the program is very fatiguing as i've said before so what that does is you're exhausted towards the end of the workout um, and generally as exhaustion sets in technique has a tendency to break down we tend to pay less attention to the way our body is performing when the fatigue starts setting in because our body is just tired we're mentally tired we're physically tired we're going to start getting less and less control of those motor units that we have the squ uh, uh, if you try and do a hundred squats i guarantee you if that hundred squat is definitely not going to look like that 
first squat that you did unless you're training 100 squats if you if you don't do that type of thing that last rep is probably not going to look like that first rep even though you should want to do that it's probably not going to be looking like that so if you have that baseline structure of how the if the body has these patterns down in muscle memory and is very well versed in them there is less likelihood that the movements are going to break down and that you'll have less breakdown in form as the fatigue sets in the reason that's bad is because it just becomes less efficient and less re repeatable and there's less consistency that's really the main reason why you don't want to have too bad of a breakdown in form so that wraps it up for the cons of the program not too many uh, and again they're kind of specific to the program uh, we move on to the interesting parts of the program obviously the first thing is the density of the workouts probably the most dense workout program that I've ever done um, just in terms of exercise choice exercise movements tonnage intensity uh, all through crams in what should be a three hour workout into a one and a half hour workout maybe even smaller than that if you're getting coached by him um, the workload is just squeezed in together so that you can get in and out of the gym really quickly it's a great thing but somewhat hard to accomplish I found it hard to accomplish to get all that work done uh, in, the, in the time frame prescribed so I found myself uh, cutting out movements cutting out sets here and there as well as cutting out uh, just chunks of the workout in order to fit it in with my 90 minute time constraint so there's that part of the program um, yet to come but I think it's kind of interesting how much I don't think I've ever seen a workout that has this like intensity and concentration of movements into such a small time frame so I thought that was really cool uh, the next interesting thing moving on from that is uh, the optional extra accessory work so in addition to your max effort, your your opening conditioning warm-up work your max effort work your volume work and your dynamic work if you still feel like that wasn't enough work you can move on to your accessory work for the day never in the nine weeks did I feel like doing extra work after doing my main workout for the day? That was never like, oh, I don't think I worked out hard enough today. Let me do more. Was never a thought in my head after I finished any day of the Dark Horse program. Um, if that's to you, you're a beast. If you find yourself getting through all that work and think to yourself, you haven't simulated the body enough and you're not stressed enough from that workout, you're a beast and a monster and that's amazing I, that's really cool that you can get through all that work maybe if you had the whole day to do it or if you wanted to do two a days which i don't recommend but that was one of the most interesting things of the the program structure the optional extras that you could have done if you really wanted to um i don't know if it's it's probably just a reflection of me and my personal fitness levels but never did i want to do any extra work after this never did, i didn't even want to step into the gym on an extra day after doing these workouts because i just wanted to rest and recuperate and i guess the final interesting thing is um the way that Ulzer is able to combine these cool training concepts so like obviously the giant sets then he does conjugate style training where you're doing volume uh, volume work max effort dynamic work and then he plays around with daily undulating periodization even some sort of like heavy light medium structure to the training programs if you've never done a program that does any of those in any significant manner this is probably a great way for you to kind of get a taste of what each of them feels like um, i thought it was a cool way to experience all of those like because of the density of the network, are you doing all of them all at once all the time? It's a bit of hyperbole there, but you're doing a lot of these different training uh, training structures combined into some uh, hybrid program, which is a really cool thing. You've never done any of them. If you've stuck with kind of straight linear percentage RPE based training, where it's very structured, very rigid, and then you come to this more of a, it feels like more of like, I guess free form would be the word I'm trying to think of to describe it. But it gives you kind of a taste of what it's like to incorporate these training styles that you might not have done before into your program. So you can do that West Side Conjugate style training, as well as DUP and HLM, and play around with sets, reps, play around with bands and chains, play around with box squats, different movements here and there. And I think that's a cool way to kind of dip your toe into that world of training styles. And if you like it, obviously incorporate it. If it's, if it's not your cup of tea, then and you just leave it where it is finish the program and call it a day or just call it a day when you don't <laughs> after a week i would say at least give this program three weeks if that's you if you're trying to if you're interested with the program do the first phase see how that treats you see how the 
intensity, the different movements, the different training concepts, how you how they appeal to you. And if you like them, do the rest of the two. If not, that. But I wouldn't write it off after a day or the first week. I would definitely at least give it that first phase to see its changes and, and see how your body tolerates the program. So should you do it? Should you do the Dark Horse Training Program? I think yes. I would say as a blanket statement, yes, unless you're a novice, a true beginner, a true novice. As I said before, if you've never walked into a gym, do something else. Um, don't, I, would, I, highly, I wouldn't recommend this program for a, a stark novice like beginner. But literally anybody else, this is probably going to be a great program for you. I think, uh, especially if you're an athlete, if you're an athlete, if you compete in a, in a sport other than the barbell sports, this is probably going to be a really good program for you because it drives up all those features, especially um, if you're in a, on a field like a contact sport, uh, things of that nature where you're doing high intensity like rugby, you're, you're getting tackled, you're walking, you're running, you're sprint, like all of this stuff kind of, this program would probably want to be more, one of the more suitable programs for that because we're playing around with so many different aspects of strength. We're, we're trying to build up that general level of strength to to, ex, to express that in certain ways. So because we're not focused on building up the squat bench deadlift, we're not sacrificing other things like conditioning, like uh, single leg movements, like unilateral training. Um, and what that does is this is going to give you that base level that's going to allow you to express yourself better on the field or court of whatever other sport that you do. Uh, because we are developing that dynamic level strength, you're going to be able to move quicker. It's going to help you exert quicker speed, be more explosive on the pitch. Um, because we're playing with volume, we're going to work on that endurance and muscular muscular strength endurance so that you can kind of output for a little longer for strong, for longer times. And obviously we're going to build up that base level of heavy, heavy strength, which you can exert on other players, absorb tackles better, absorb hits better. Um, and then we wrap that up with this giant set conditioning and most sports are very dynamic in nature. So you do need that level of conditioning that this program is able to drive up and build. So it kind of addressing a lot of attributes that athletes that don't compete in the barbell sports that compete in other sports will need in their own sports. Um, so I think that's a really great thing to do if you are obviously in that position. Um, I think it's, it's great as an off-season style training if you do compete in the barbell sports. So it's probably a great way to, if you're a power lifter, it's, it's a great thing to do in the off-season as a, as a break. If you want some mental fresh, if you're pretty much doing anything other than this, it'll definitely give you a mental refresh and a physical refresh in the most tiring way possible. Um, but it will give you that change in structure and change in workouts that you, you're probably mentally craving and physically craving. So what is the final rating and review, the overall rating and review of this program? I would personally give it an eight and a half out of 10. The Dark Horse program is a fantastic program that I think applies to, can apply to pretty much anybody out there, um, obviously apart from beginners, but I've said that numerous times. Um, if you have any level of experience in the barbell sports, you're looking to switch up the program, great for you. If you're a weekend warrior, this is a great program. If you're strapped for time, great program. This program can apply and can be tailored to any level of fitness and any situation, any circumstance, and really help you bring together a, a good general, a huge base level of strength and conditioning. We have those two forces helping together to come out with a great outcome for you. Uh, now, obviously, it is a free template online. Um, also releases a couple of these programs every few months. So if you do want to get personalized, a personalized tailor program, there's links for him so you can email him directly where he's able to actually tailor the programs to you. Uh, otherwise, you just kind of use your own judgment and change the program as you wish. Um, I subbed out movements, subbed out movements here and there. So it is a free template online. So I don't think there's really anything to lose by doing it. You're not paying for it um, unless you get that personalized template structure, which is going to be great. I just know that. Um, but given that it's a free program available for free online, I don't think there's any risk in you trying it out. Even again, try it out for that first three weeks. Give it one month, uh, like a one month free trial of a free program. But do that and then you'll be able to see the at least expose your body to a different style of training and a different mentality of training, which I think will transfer over to your other regular training in the future because of the nature of how this drives up physical physical results as well as that mental 
that mental drive, I think, is going to be huge and a key factor for the outcome of this program. So I think that wraps it up. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. It looks like this review video is longer than the programming video that Oz released, so there's a lot to unpack with the video. Uh, a lot to unpack with his video, I guess. So if you made it this far, thank you for watching. Um, I really recommend checking out Oldrew's uh, YouTube channel. He has some amazing free resources that I've relied heavily upon in my training in recent months since I discovered um, his information in his channel. He does some great work. I can't recommend uh, checking out his YouTube enough. Uh, check out the links below. I'll leave the links below for my blog, winstrength.com, where I've actually got the write-up here. Uh, again, a very long write-up, so if you want to read more into the program, get more... Uh, insight into the program check that out as well as some other uh, reviews uh, I'll leave a, a playlist here for the rest of the dark horse training playlist so you can check out my daily workouts uh, and again thank you for watching this has been Selwyn from Win Strength and remember a better life through strength